I've got some uh, information about the large ring that uh, I use in the use saver. Um, the large ring is really the heart of the use saver design. Uh, the use saver is, is basically an adjustable friction saver, but with the large ring, if you can pass the pinto pulley or a small arborist ring through the large ring and do a bunch of choking configurations on the stem so you get the best of both worlds. You can do the choking and, and still do the, the uh, uh, remote set and retrieve uh, that you could do with a normal ring and ring, ring and ring friction saver. But unfortunately, uh, there's nothing in the industry that uh, offers uh, a two and a half inch uh, diameter. Uh, a DMM tops out at 40 uh, millimeters. A 1.8 uh, inch large arborist ring isn't uh, big enough. The the largest thing that is marked and uh, and available is uh, uh, a figure eight. This is marked for 25 kilonewtons, and you can. See, it's almost, but not enough to pass the pinto or a small ring. So, unfortunately, uh, we don't have a choice from a marked certified uh, vendor. Um, but uh, I have sourced um, a two and a half inch steel ring from West Marine, and I have sourced a two and a half inch titanium ring from uh, Titan and uh, neither one of those rings is stamped and certified but they're both uh, advertised by the manufacturer as uh, having huge strength uh, uh, actually working loads in excess of, of 5,000 pounds working load not breaking load which is which is way stronger than the um, than the uh, uh, climbing specification. So um, I, I have these two rings, and uh, you know, as kind of a shade tree mechanic, I would like to convince myself that uh, when I go climbing on these rings, they're going to be okay, and um, and they're not going to be working hard to to hold my weight. So I've I put a little um, test rig together. And believe me, this is not a substitution for certification, um, it, but it, it at least gives me the confidence that uh, that these rings are uh, are going to be loafing when they're carrying me in the tree. Um, normally, what you would do is to take a ring and put it in a nice hydraulic uh, uh, rig and with calibrated load cells and computers, and you'd pull it and and uh, you'd measure the stress and the strain and uh, you'd eventually get to the yield point and the maximum braking strength and uh, uh, you'd have all that information. Uh, I don't have any of that equipment but I still want the answer so what I did here was rig a test rig and I've got uh, over here a lever chain hoist that's good for about a ton and a half, a metric ton and a half, 3300 pounds out of the chain hoist. Um, got a rope shackle here holding the other end of the rig and um, I can I can make 2,000 pounds of force here pretty easily but what I can't do is measure it accurately um, and um, so I thought about it a while and I decided well I really don't care um, if I make the force equal through the rings, then I don't care what it is as long as it's equal. So I just took the titanium ring here from Titan and the steel ring here from um, West Marine and put them together with some heavy uh, quick links and I'm going to now stretch these and I'm going to, since the geometry is identical, I'm going to measure the simple vernier caliper. Uh, uh, I'm going to measure this, this diameter crossways. Since the geometry is identical, I can get the strain measurement, the, 
the uh, change in length um, by measuring the cross axis getting smaller because that will be perfectly proportional to the to the longitudinal axis getting uh, longer um, and uh, it, that's it that's the the simple test rig going to uh, put more and more force into the chain and at each point where there is equal force going through both rings I'm going to measure this diameter and then this diameter and what am I what am I looking to get out of this? Well, three things. Number one, I'd like the rings not to break. Uh, that's kind of basic. Um, and at, at 2,000 pounds of force, um, I certainly don't expect the rings to break. By the way, the 2,000 pounds, I chose the 2,000 pounds because that's 10 times the working load that I'm going to put on my climbing system. My cli you know, as a climber, I'm, I'm worth about 200 pounds, and so 10 times that as a uh, safety factor is 2,000 pounds. That's what, what my test is going to be designed around. So I'm going to put 2,000 pounds around here and uh, see if they break. Okay, that's going to be, uh, there's, going to be no, uh, there's going to be no suspense on that test. The other thing I'm going to look for is I'm going to measure these dimensions carefully and at the end of the test I want to look carefully to be sure that the rings didn't permanently distort. Um, that uh, if they went into the test as circles and they came out as ovals then you'd say up oh, the ring is working too hard um, and is starting to distort and permanently set and um, uh, that, that would uh, chase me off the idea pretty fast. But the, the real thing I want, the third thing I want out of this, is to convince myself that at least at 2,000 pounds, both of these rings are operating deep in the linear portion of the stress-strain curve. Um, stress is force per unit area, and strain is the change in dimension. Um, everything on God's green earth even a diamond changes dimension when force is applied, when stress is applied. And so, but the, but the real question is, is it straining more than it should be? If you pull on it, you expect it to get longer. Absolutely normal. But if it starts to get longer than you expect it to get, that says it's straining, it's working too hard, and it's getting close to that point where it may yield and uh, break. So what I would like to be able to measure is that the two rings are, are deep in the linear portion of the stress-strain curve um, where there is, there's no chance of them uh, breaking. And as it turns out, by hooking the rings up like this, the equations, you can push the equations around, the stress-strain uh, equations, and a lot of things get very simple. Um, since uh, we know the force is the same, the geometry is the same, we know what the diameter is, we know what the materials are, all we have to do is then plot this diameter against this diameter as the force goes up and what we're looking for is that the diameters track a straight line linear proportional relationship. Um, we don't want the stress, we don't want the strain to necessarily be equal, okay? this. The steel ring here is, is thicker than the titanium. It's made out of steel. Ti titanium is stretchier than steel, way stronger than steel, but stretchier than steel. So we're not looking for the, the, the strain, the change in length, to be equal. What we're looking for is that they're proportional. And if that turns out to be a straight line relationship, um, then we can we can say with confidence that at least up to this stress level, the strain is um, 
uh, in the linear portion of the of the stress strain curve and should be uh, not near a yield point where the where the piece could fail. So that's kind of the basic uh, 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 shade tree mechanic uh, approach here. Um, I will. Um, a couple of clicks at a time, make each measurement, record it, plot it out, and see what there is to see. If that curve is a straight line, good news. If that curve is not a straight line, that says one of these rings, I'm not sure which one, but one of the rings is straining more than it should be, it's changing length more than it should be, and that's a ten telltale sign that it's getting near a yield point. All right, um, I'll post the data uh, elsewhere.